The amazing digital circus is a massive place full of all kinds of awesome characters, which is why I added it to Minecraft, where I'll be surviving in it for the next 100 days as Pomni. Using my incredible new powers, I will fight off weird and wacky monsters and search for a way to return back to the real world, while also turning into bigger and more powerful forms. Will I be able to stop the abstraction's evil plans, or will I get lost in the void? You'll have to watch until the end to find out. On day one, I spawned into the amazing digital circus, surrounded by the other circus members. Where am I? Who am I? I can't remember anything. Suddenly, a strange man with a mouth for a head appeared in front of us. Welcome to the amazing digital Digital Circus! My name is Kane, and you, my friend, will be known as Omni! Before I was able to ask any more questions, a massive abstracted being appeared before me and all of my new friends. Your time for fun and games is over. I, the abstraction, will abstract all of you and make the tent join the void. Wait, no! This isn't supposed to be happening! The abstraction released his minions into the tent, and they began to attack everyone! All the strange inhabitants of the circus began to run for their lives, scattering in different directions. One of the abstracted monsters jumped at me, but Kane was able to protect me with a big toothy bite attack. Omni, I'll hold this guy off! Find your staff and hat. They will give you your magic powers. Pothmo knows where they are. I knew I didn't stand a chance against the abstracted monsters, so I ran for my life. On day two, I was being chased through the tent by the abstracted monsters with nothing to defend myself with. I looked around me and was able to find a staff on the ground. I picked it up, but didn't gain any powers. Aw oh man, I guess I have to try and fight back the old fashioned way. The abstracted monsters caught up to me and I began to use my weapon to keep them away. It turns out that inside of the digital circus, I was a skilled fighter. I swung my staff with precision, knocking the monsters back. Unfortunately, I did not have enough strength to fight the monsters alone. I need to find help. I continued running until I finally found a door labeled the name Kofmo. This is the circus member Kane wanted me to find. I opened the door, but instead of Kofmo, I was met with another abstracted being inside. Kofmo had turned into one of the monsters. The abstracted Kofmo hit me with a glitch slash attack, causing my arm to become glitched. I wasn't able to hold my weapon anymore. What happened? What should I do? The abstracted monsters were closing in and I thought I was done for. Suddenly, a little bubble appeared out of nowhere and used his jaws to bite away a clear path. Over here, newbie! I took my chance to follow the bubble before it was too late. On day three, Bubble took me into another part of the tent. Oh man, now I'll never find my magic hat and staff. Don't worry, Pomni. I actually found them on my way to save you. Bubble took me around the corner to reveal my hat and staff waiting for me on a golden platform. I didn't hesitate and picked up the objects. Suddenly, I grew bigger in size and even more powerful. I now had five more hearts and I gained magical powers. Whoa, it worked. Those were some of the Ringmaster's artifacts. Now you shouldn't glitch every time an abstracted monster touches you. Just then, a bunch of strange creatures dropped down out of nowhere and started jumping towards us. Oh no, the gloinks are here. Run! Bubble tried to run away, but the gloinks grabbed him and carried him off. Hey, drop my friend! I tried out my new powers on the gloink. I was now more magical than ever. Bolts of arcane lightning rained down on the gloinks. Magical chains then sprouted from the ground. And as I swiped, I found I had shimmering slashes. I was taking care of the gloinks quickly, but more continued to fall around me. I didn't have time to waste on them. So 
so I followed after the bubble nappers to save my new friend. On days four through five, I followed the gloinks into their nest, where they tossed bubble into a pile of random stuff. I rushed to his side to make sure he wasn't hurt. Are you okay? I think you have bigger problems, intruder. I turned around and found myself face to face with a horrible serpent-like monster. I am the Gloink Queen. What form of non-Gloinkian mass dares enter my nest? I will turn you into Gloinks. The Gloink Queen snapped at me with her jaws, but I was able to jump away from the attack. Get away from me! Using my new wand, I sent a flurry of psychic slashes and chain attacks to keep the serpent at bay. My powers were strong, but I could tell she was getting frustrated. Stop resisting me! The Gloink Queen used her Gloink War Power to try and throw me off guard, and I fought back with my Psychic Lightning Powers, attacking the Queen for massive damage. Just when I didn't think things could get any worse, an abstracted being fell from the ceiling onto the Gloink Queen. The two of them fused together and caused her to transform into an abstracted Gloink Queen. That's not good. The monster turned her attention towards me, and I ran for my life! On days six through seven, I was being chased through the nest by the abstracted Gloink Queen. I ran around a corner and took cover behind a pile of junk as the Gloink Queen tried to sniff me out. Suddenly, I realized I was sitting next to one of my fellow circus members, Jax. Ah, newbie, you're actually alive. I may not be much longer, not while that thing is looking for me. This nest isn't very stable. Maybe you can use that to your advantage. I knew Jax was on to something. So I looked around the nest and realized there was a weak point in the ceiling. It's risky, but I have to go for it. I jumped out of my hiding spot and at just the right moment, I used my new wand to blast an attack at the ceiling. Rubble fell down onto the Gloink Queen, slowing her down and giving Jax and me a chance to escape. Now, run! Together, the two of us ran out of the nest while the Gloink Queen struggled beneath my trap. On days eight, through nine, I narrowly escaped the Gloink Nest and found a place to take cover with Jax. That circus has been more dangerous than usual. You need to find Ragatha before it gets worse. Where can I find her? She was last seen at the grounds. I would check there. I left Jax and headed to the grounds to see if I could find any clues. When I arrived, I found myself at a carnival where Ragatha was trapped inside one of the prize booths. Call me, get me out of here. I I ran towards her, but was soon stopped by a mini version of Kane, who appeared out of thin air. Whoa there! If you want one of my prizes, you have to win my game! Wait, Kane? Nope! I'm Mini Kane. Don't tell Big Me I escaped. Now let's begin. The Mini Kane casted magic on us, causing us to disappear into thin air. On days 10 through 12, I reappeared at a carnival game where a bunch of targets were set up in front of me. I now had a bow and three arrows in my inventory. Hit the targets. If all three shots are a bullseye, you win. Looks like I don't have a choice. Time to win this game. I readied my first shot and fired, landing a bullseye on the first try. I went for it again and managed to shoot another bullseye. I've got this. Only one more to go. I sent out my final arrow, but before it could hit the bullseye, the target teleported to another spot, causing me to miss my shot. What? That's cheating. Sorry, no refunds. I walked over to give that scammer a piece of my mind when an abstracted minion bursted into the area and ran towards me. I wasn't able to stop it from running into Mini Kane and fusing with them. Oh no, I had such a short life. The Mini Kane transformed into a much larger abstracted entity. 
That's not good. The monster lunged at me and I prepared for battle. On days 13 through 15, I was fighting the abstracted mini cane. It charged and used its abstracted blast ability on me, dealing loads of damage. I readied my wand and used my magic slash attack on it back. It released an even larger abstracted black hole, bringing me down to low health. I can't win this. I need to get out of here. I took my chance to run back towards the main grounds, where I saw Jax looking for me. Just then, the abstracted monster burst out of the trees. It was still hot on my trail. Stand back. I've got this. Jax stepped in between me and the beast and used his swift strike power to distract it. While I was busy with Jax, I reunited with Ragatha and freed her from her prize booth prison. Thank you. Take this, it'll help you defeat that monster. Ragatha handed me a frost staff and I quickly ran back into battle to help my friend. Stand back. I used my frost staff to summon icicles from the sky on the abstracted entity, causing the monster to freeze in place. Is it over? Suddenly, the abstracted mini cane broke through its paralysis and charged towards Ragatha. It hit her with a massive blow, but Jax was able to use his powers to finish off the monster. Ragatha, are you okay? Unfortunately, we were too late. Ragatha's body transformed into a glitchy mess. That's not good. She's coming for us next. Consumed by her glitch, Ragatha ran towards Jax and myself with intent to kill. On day 16, through 18, the glitched Ragatha was coming after us. Now, unable to control herself, she began to attack. She had a thunder punch power that she threw at us, and it hurt pretty bad. I did my best to dodge and hold her back with my own magic attacks, but I really did not want to hurt her. Ragatha, it's me, Omni. <laughs> She didn't look like she was going to listen. Instead, she continued to charge at me again. Hang on, I've got an idea. Without hesitation, Jax used his swift slash powers to push Ragatha back into her cage. Now! I sealed the cage with my new ice powers and trapped her away from Jax and myself for now. What should we do? You need to find Kane and Kira before she abstracts. Take this map. I'll watch over her while you're gone. With no other choice, I took Jax's map and hurried onwards. On days 19 through 22, I followed the map until I found myself in a disorienting digital maze. Where would Kane be in here? I wandered around the maze and walked through a lot of strange looking areas. Some were stranger than others. Suddenly, I spotted an exit door. Wait, there's a way out of here? I rushed towards it, but Kane appeared behind me before I could get too far. Omni, what's wrong? Did someone start to glitch? Actually, Rakatha has, but, but that's not the point. Why didn't you tell me there was an exit? Exit? Ha! <laughs> there aren't any exits here. But there's one right there. I turned around and the exit was gone. I had a strange feeling, but I didn't dwell on it too long. The abstraction had appeared before me again. You got away from me last time, but you're mine now. The abstraction used a black hole attack, but Kane leapt towards me and managed to protect us both. Don't worry about me. I'll hold this guy off. Ha -ha! Take this list and gather the items on it before Ragatha abstracts. You got it. Without a second to spare, I ran off to collect the items. On days 23 to 26, I was beginning the search for all three items on the list that Kane had given me. A wrench, a slingshot, and a sword? Where am I supposed to find these? Out of the corner of my eye, I spotted the first item at the end of a crazy obstacle course. Oh, that's lucky. Here goes nothing. I jumped from platform to platform over dangerous pits until I climbed up to an extremely extremely tall platform. 
Oh man, I wish I could fly right about now. I jumped onto some bouncy blocks and launched myself up to the end. There, I obtained the first item. As I looked around, I noticed a flashy sign that pointed me towards the next item. This might be easier than I thought. I followed the sign. When I arrived at the next area, I saw the second item sealed behind a glass door with dozens of blocks in front of it. If it's the slingshot you wish to claim, simply spell your name. Hmm, I have an idea. I picked up the blocks and carefully spelled out Pomni. As expected, the door opened and I was able to go in and get the next object. Inside, I spotted a large barrel sitting alone. Maybe that has the final object. As I peeked inside, something pulled me into the barrel and I was drawn into another realm. On days 27 to 30, I fell inside of the barrel world and found myself surrounded by colorful red monkeys. Behind the crowd of monkeys, I saw the final listed item that I needed to save Ragatha. Excuse me, could I borrow that sword? <laughs> no, the sword is ours. Everyone get them. The beast attacked me as a group, using their fists to pummel me. I used my magic attacks and new freezing cold powers to try and get them off of me. But there were dozens of monkeys. Suddenly, they all joined together and formed one giant monkey monster. <laughs> monkey crash into The now massive monkey had enormous strength. He lifted boulders off the ground like it was nothing, then hurled them in my direction. As they hit me, they exploded, hurting me really badly. The monkey even stomped around like an ape, jumping into the air and barreling down with enough force to shake the very ground. I tried to use my powers to slow him down, but he was a force of nature. I have to make a run for it. I ran past the monster and after the sword. Finally, I was able to grab it. Suddenly, all three listed items fused in my inventory, forming into the next ringmaster's artifact. I transformed into my third form, gaining five more hearts and new shaman powers. I can fly now. Time to teach these monkeys a lesson. I used my powers on the giant ape. My lasers were extremely powerful, raining down from above the monkey and dealing lots of damage. Not only that, but they reinforced my health, granting me golden hearts. He tried to put up a fight, stomping and throwing boulders, but I was too much for him. Eventually, with one awesome final meteor strike, I defeated the giant monkey. I better hurry back to Ragatha before it's too late. With my new ability to fly, I flew out of the top of the barrel. On days 31 to 34, I returned to the prize counter to find the entire place in ruin. Omni, she broke out of the cage, help. Suddenly, Ragatha ambushed me with a lightning fist attack. I used my new laser powers on her to try and weaken her down. She continued to fight, but thanks to my new abilities, I was able to hold my ground. I managed to slow her down enough to land a new magical shaman healing spell on her. And in a blink, she returned back to normal. The ringmaster's artifact worked. Oh, my head. I saw a strange room while I was glitching. I think you need to see this. I followed Ragatha while Jack stayed behind to clean things up. <laughs> I'd never do any cleaning. I arrived into a mysterious room covered in paintings on the wall. Wait, I ran into something like this before, but what is this place? I'm not too sure, but I think it's related to the abstraction. Curiously, I touched a painting on the wall and suddenly I got sucked inside of it. On days 35 to 38, I appeared on the other side of the painting to find myself in a massive void. I felt myself get lost in how big and endless it was. Where am I? Hello? Suddenly, Kane appeared in front of me. My whack watch was right. You're coming with me. Kane grabbed my hand and transported me back inside of the tent. There you go. Never go back there again. It's dangerous. Dangerous? What are you keeping from us? Tell me now. Before Kane could answer, the room began to shake. Uh-oh, looks like I gotta run. 
Suddenly, Kane teleported away, leaving me behind. I'm going to get to the bottom of this, but for now, I better make sure everyone is okay. Next, I began following the shaking. On days 39 to 42, I arrived at the source of the tremors to find Zubal's head being chased by an abstracted Rex. A uh, little help here. One sec, I'm on it. I used my giant laser powers on the abstracted Rex and got their attention. Hey you, stop picking on my friend, you freak. The abstracted Rex ran at me and tried to hit me with the void breath attack. I struck back with my magical slashes and arcane attacks, doing my best to avoid him. In a flurry of movement, he caused tentacles to sprout from the ground that reached up to slam at me. I quickly evaded them with my flying powers and shot a powerful meteor attack back at them. The abstracted Rex fell to my might. Oh, thanks, newbie. Huh, you sure are big. And you sure are small. What happened to your body? The abstracted creatures took my body parts and spread them all over the circus. Could you please just be a doll and find them for me? I'll make sure it's worth your while. You've got yourself a deal. On days 43 to 46, I searched the circus. I quickly found Zubal's arms stuck at the end of a fire obstacle course. All right, flying powers, don't let me down now. I flew through the flaming hoops. I made it to the stage, but a fire creature popped out to stop me. Oh there, those arms belong to the great and powerful Flambo. No, they belong to my friend Zubal. Not anymore. Finders keepers, now get off my stage before I make you. The fiery being dashed at me with his twin flame swords and attacked me with his burning hot powers. Flambo was deceptively quick and with alarming speed slashed his weapons at me, managing to wound me. Then he launched a flurry of embers at me, hitting me square on. I was shocked by how much damage his flames dealt to me. I retaliated with my own arcane powers, but they didn't appear to bother him too much. I'm going to have to find a plan B. On the wall, I noticed the same strange painting that sucked me into the void. Hey, hothead, over here. I taunted him, causing him to dash at me in a rage. As he charged into attack, I nimbly dodged out of the way, causing him to be swallowed into the painting and be sent to the void. Wait, where am I? No, Flambo! Sorry, buddy, I have to help my friends. Just like that, I claimed Zubal's arms and continued my search. On days 47 to 50, I arrived at the next area, only to find Zubal's legs waiting inside. There they are. That was easy. I went towards them, but suddenly a tiger jumped out and swallowed the legs whole. Hey, spit that out. I tried to use my magic attacks on the tiger, but it refused to listen to me. Suddenly, I spotted a nearby pond full of fish, and I got a brilliant idea. I grabbed some salmon from the pond and showed it off to the tiger. Do you want this big guy? Come and get it. Then drop it! The tiger spat out Zubal's legs, and I tossed them the salmon, which they happily munched on. I went on to claim my prize. Only one more body part to go! Out of nowhere, the tiger began acting weird and abstracted into a beast. Without another moment, it pounced onto me. On days 51 to 54, I was facing off against the abstracted tiger. The beast used its claws at me, which dealt tons of damage. The beast had some sort of blood ability and shot blood slashes at me with deadly accuracy. They also would fire needles at me, each pin hurting me more and more. I retaliated with my lasers, trying to get rid of this abstracted tiger. That only seemed to make them angrier, and they started firing black holes at me, sucking me in before they would explode. Finally, I had enough, and I used my meteor magic attack, and the tiger fell. To my surprise, he dropped Zubal's body as well. That's the last part I need. 
Suddenly, a little abstracted gloink snatched up the body before I could grab it. Hey, get back here! I chased after the thief, who would jump and run with immense speed. After a bit, I was finally gaining on it when I spotted another exit door in the distance. I knew there was an exit. I hesitated and realized the gloink was getting away. I had to choose between the exit and Zubal's body. I can't let Zubal down. I'll come back to this later. I quickly chased after the gloink. On days 55 through 58, I was chasing the gloink around the circus. Soon, we ran into Chef Bubble, getting dinner set up. Before anyone could react, the little gloink hopped up onto the table, sending food everywhere. As it snapped up some of the digital food, it began to transform into a giant gloink monster. Could you do this? The monster calmly turned to Bubble before popping them with a laser attack. Uh oh! The Gloink monster decided it was my turn to be chased and charged right at me. It used its void barrage attacks to deal tons of damage to me. I flew around to dodge and returned fire with my powerful lasers. It wasn't long before I had taken a bunch of damage. Luckily, I was at dinner. I grabbed up the virtual food around and used it to heal up. All right, round two, big guy. Our deadly aerial duel continued. I leveled more arcane bursts at the monster, hoping to deal more damage. The gloink monster retaliated with more of its own void attacks, including massive explosives, but I was too strong. I hit it with another laser, and I knew the fight was about to be over. As I landed a final massive lightning storm attack, they fell, dropping Zubal's body as they died. Just then, Zubal's head popped out and hopped over to me. Oh, whoa, you finally got all my body parts. Stop wasting time and pull me back together, please. Oh, of course. I quickly handed the parts over to Zubal, who transformed back to their normal self. Ah, uh, much better. Wait, I don't remember this part of my body. I think this is yours. Zubal handed me the next Ringmaster artifact, the Phoenix Ring. I gained five more hearts and the firewall power that I saw Kane use earlier. Thanks. This will definitely help us take down the abstraction. Suddenly, Gangle ran up to us in tears. Mommy, come quick. Kanger is in trouble. All right, lead the way. On days 59 to 62, Gangle led me into a room full of different doors. Huh? That's weird. These weren't here before. Then we'll just have to check out each one until we find Kinger. We began checking each door to see where they led. Some of them led to really weird places, like other dimensions or other bizarre locations. What about this one? I opened one door, and as I went inside, I found some people in a bathtub. Um, excuse me, do you mind? Oh, sorry! I went to continue checking doors, but as I approached the next one, a giant abstracted chicken burst out of it. Gangle, watch out! Looks like we've got company! The abstracted chicken charged straight at me and attacked with powerful lightning strikes. I fought back using my arcane magic, but the abstracted chicken was shrugging off every hit I landed. Then he began to hit me with abstracted attacks that pulled me in from afar, getting me close so it could strike Strike me. Did it take this? Gangle used her ribbon wind attacks on the abstracted chicken, finally bringing it down. As it died, it dropped a map. Perfect. This could lead us to Kinger. Go back and let the others know while I look into this. Yeah, you got it. Gangle and I went our separate ways as I set off and continued looking for Kinger. On days 63 through 66, I was following the map, which led me to a massive tunnel. Wow, I didn't know a place like this existed in the digital circus. I continued walking down the tunnel, which seemed like it was going on forever. Hey, wait a minute. Didn't I see that globe before? Am I stuck in a loop? Something is trapping me in here. I turned around and tried walking back the way I had come in and found a little abstracted goblin caught spells. 
Aha! Hey you, stop that! I tried to attack it with my magic powers, but it dodged and ran off at an incredible speed. I took off trying to follow it through the tunnel, but I just couldn't catch up to it. Okay, that's it. I've had enough of this. I aimed and attacked at the floor and blasted a hole in the path of the abstracted goblin. It was moving too fast and couldn't react in time, falling into the abyss below. With the abstracted goblin gone, the spell broke. The tunnel changed and an exit was revealed. Finally! All right, hang in there, Kinger. I'm coming for you. On days 67 through 70, I exited through the tunnel's door, taking in my surroundings. I saw that I was standing on some train tracks. I followed the train tracks for a bit until I came across Kinger, trapped in a cage, sitting in the middle of the tracks. Oh, hi there. Nice to see you again. A little help here? A train horn sounded in the distance, and the chugging of an engine started to grow louder and louder. Uh-oh, I have to stop that train. I raced towards the train, using my powers to try and slow it down. Nothing seemed to work, though, and it just kept pushing forward, closer and closer to Kinger. Finally, desperate and running out of time, I used my meteor power, which finally managed to stop the train right before it collided with Kinger. Whew, you did it. Thanks a lot. I thought I was a goner for sure. As I hopped off the cage to break Kinger free, the floor opened up under him and he fell down into a hole. No! Quickly, I broke the cage open and flew down the hole after him. On days 71 to 74, I finally arrived at the bottom of the hole, finding myself standing on a giant chessboard. I looked around the room for any signs of Kinger and saw him on the other side of the room, being held captive in a cage by a princess. And sitting next to her was one of the ringmaster's artifacts. Who are you? Me? Well, I'm the princess of this chessboard. But once I marry my sweet kinger here, I'll become the queen. Wow, gee, I'm, well, I'm flattered at all, but I uh, don't really want to marry you. Well, too bad. You're the only king around here, and I have to marry royalty. You can't just force someone to marry you, lady. You're crazy. Lady? How dare you? You will only refer to me as your highness. The princess began to distort and abstract it into a freaky monster. You'll pay for disrespecting your queen. The abstracted queen lunged at me in a fury, and I prepared to defend myself. On days 75 through 78, I was locked in combat with the abstracted queen. She used an explosive blast, which hit with a surprising amount of force, causing a lot of damage and destroying parts of the chessboard. I tried to fight back using my lasers, but it didn't even seem to affect her at all. She unleashed a void barrage that left me nowhere to escape and gave me the withering effect. <laughs> Is that all you got? She launched another powerful explosive blast, which knocked me backwards as it landed. I took a second to recollect myself and realized I was standing right next to the ringmaster's artifact. This is my chance! I grabbed the artifact, causing me to gain five more hearts and the starfall power. Checkmate, princess! I used my new starfall power to blast the princess into oblivion. Now that she was dealt with, I rushed back over to Kinger's cage and freed him. Whew, you did it. Thanks a lot. I thought I was a goner for sure. Our celebration was cut short as the sky began to grow dark. Nervously, I looked around when suddenly the abstraction appeared right in front of me. On days 79 to 82, I was standing face to face with the abstraction himself. Well now, you've been making a real mess of things, haven't you? What do you want? I've come to offer you a deal. Stop your resistance against me, and in exchange, I'll give you the exit to this place. An exit door appeared in front of me as he finished talking. This was my chance to finally escape the digital circus. I don't have any other choice. I need to take this chance. Fine, you've got yourself a deal. I walked through the door cautiously and found myself standing in a strange office room with another exit door. What the? What is this all about? Confused, I walked through the next exit door, only to find myself back in another office room. I rushed through 
through the exit again. But each time the door led right into another office. No! Ah! Let me out of here! I continued to run through the exit doors, returning to the office over and over until I finally found myself in the void. That's when I had the terrible realization. There's really no way out of here, is there? I'm stuck here. The abstraction suddenly materialized in front of me. <laughs> you actually fell for my trap. With nobody here to help you, I could finally banish you to where all of my creatures reside. Have fun in your cellar. I felt myself fading away as I was transported to a new location. On days 83 through 86, I appeared in the cellar, surrounded by abstracted beings. The creatures began closing in on me within seconds of appearing. I attempted to fight them off using all of my powers, but they were much stronger than usual in this realm. No way! Is this the end for me? Just when it seemed hopeless, pain appeared from the darkness and summoned spirits of light to fight off the abstractions. He surrounded us in a protective firewall before turning to me. I think it's time to get you out of here. He teleported us back to the safety of the tent. I'm sorry for taking the abstractions offer. I thought I was finally going to escape this place, but he tricked me. It's okay. I know all of you were really wanting an exit, but now's not the time to dwell on that. We need to find Gangle. She knows where the final ringmaster's artifact is. Suddenly, we heard the sound of something shattering. I rushed over to investigate, leaving Kane behind. On days 87 to 90, I rushed in to investigate the shattering sound and found Gangle crying over a broken mask. Gangle, I was just looking for you. Listen, I need you to tell me where to find the final ringmaster's artifact. Hi. I would love to, but I can't remember. Not without my comedy mask. What if I get it fixed for you? Yeah, that might work. And I've got just the idea. Jack strolled up to us out of nowhere. Come with me, newbie. I think I can help you fix this problem. I followed Jax into another door, leading us to a candy-themed room. There should be something around here somewhere. Jax, I need glue, not a snack. This isn't helping. Frustrated, I continued looking around the room. As I was exploring, one of the candy pieces on the ground began to transform into a monster. It lunged at me, and I braced myself for a fight. On days 91 through 93, I found myself squaring off against the candy monster. It hit me with a sugar breath attack, causing significant damage. Thinking fast, I fought back using my arcane light but we seemed pretty evenly matched. It then leveled some sour jawbreakers at me, following up with a lemony ray of power. Hey, Jax, a little help over here? Oh, yeah, right. Jax used his own abilities on the candy monster, knocking them back. Taking advantage, I rushed in and attacked with my meteors, dealing the finishing blow. As the candy monster died, it dropped chewed bubble gum onto the floor. Ew, that's gross. But actually, you know what? I think I might be able to use this. See, I told you everything would work out. We returned back to Gangle, and I used the gum on her mask, fixing it good as new. You fixed my comedy mask. Thank you. Oh, and I remember where the ringmaster's artifact is now. Gangle quickly scribbled down a map and handed it to me. There you go. Thanks, Gangle. It's time to get the final piece and take down that abstraction. On days 94 to 96, I followed the map to find the final ringmaster's artifact waiting for me. Hmm, this has to be a trick. Can I just pick it up? I was about to grab it when Kane appeared and snapped matched it up first. Hey, what's the big idea? We're on the same side. That we are, Pomni. But I wanted to test you before giving the final artifact up. I wanted to see how much you've learned on your journey. How do you want me to prove myself? 
in combat! Show me if you have what it takes to surpass me! Kane attacked me with his rapid fire blaze attacks. Fireball after fireball was lobbed at me, and I did my best to dodge out of the way. I used my lasers in retaliation, but it hardly seemed to affect Kane. Not bad! You've really learned a thing or two! With the twirl of his staff, Kane summoned a horde of spirits to aid him in battle. They swarmed me like bees, obscuring my vision and allowing him to hit me more easily. I called on my arcane magic to rain down ice and lightning, hoping to hit everyone at once. I then focused my attacks on Kane himself, even creating walls of fire to block his path. Kane was tricky though, and managed to use a frosty teleportation power to dodge out of the way of my many attacks. Finally though, I hit him and his minions with a raining star attack, defeating the spirits and bringing Kane to the floor. I had won the battle. Ha <laughs> ha ha! Very well. You've earned this. He handed me the final artifact, granting me five more hearts and a new power. Let's gather up the others and make our attack plan. On days 97 to 98, I gathered around with the other circus members, ready to discuss the final course of action. I finally gathered all the ringmaster's artifacts. It's time that we struck the abstraction down before he can strike us. What? How are we supposed to do that? He's so powerful. Come on now, crybaby. Don't you have a bit more faith in our team? But Gangle is right. We can't just run in blindly. He has a whole army of abstracted monsters. Heh, <laughs> that's why I've got this prepared. Jax tossed me a map. This will lead you right to the abstraction's base. We can ambush him when he's not expecting it. This is vital information. How long have you had this, Jax? Eh, somewhere between 97 and 98 days. But don't worry about the details. Let's crush this guy. Everyone but Kane left the area. He wanted to talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. You've really united everyone here. I think you deserve this as a token of our thanks. He handed me a hat that granted me five more hearts. This will definitely help win the battle. I won't let the team down. On day 99, we followed Jax's map to find the abstraction's base. It was swarming with abstracted monsters that we needed to take down. All right, let's mess this place up. So the abstraction has to deal with us. Everyone ran in and began to fight the abstracted army. Gangle used her ribbon wind powers that shot out like razors. Jax backed her up with a violet slash attack. Thanks. Eh, don't sweat it. Just then, I saw some of the abstracted beings close in on my friends. Leave them alone. In a powerful blast of my laser powers, I eliminated them. We were made making good work when suddenly the abstraction itself arrived. You! You escaped the cellar! I did, and I'm here to stop you once and for all. No! I won't let you! The abstraction charged at me and teleported us both to another location. On day 100, I reappeared in the final area with just me and the abstraction. You should have just stayed in the cellar while you had a chance. Now I'm going to make this long and painful. I'll never submit to a liar like you. You're a monster. Then let's see if you have what it takes to defeat me. Without hesitation, the abstraction began his attack. Armed with the powers of glitch and night. He shot beams of darkness and withering explosions at me. I didn't have a moment to rest as I soldiered through the onslaught, retaliating with my own digital powers. I struck him with arcane bolts, lasers, and even my ice powers. I was slowly whittling away at his health. He used his massive void explosion attack, but I was nimble enough to dodge it. What? Impossible! Don't underestimate me! I used my meteor power on him and dealt the finishing blow. The abstraction died and the digital circus was saved. Yes, I did it. Pomni!